At the top of the list of things that define Apple's designs language today are the MacBooks. All that starts with a multi-ton hunk of pure metal. Let's explore how that metal gets crafted into the most converted laptop in the world. Making MacBooks is extremely complicated, and it involves hundreds of tiny parts, but it all invariably starts with the laptop body. Now, not only is the body part of the laptop hold everything, but it's also the part you immediately interact with. And for Apple, that means that their laptops have to be the best out there. And that starts with the material, which for MacBooks is aluminum, which is chosen not only because it looks and feels good, but because it provides the best strength to weight ratio, meaning that Apple can make their laptops super thin and light without compromising their strength. Anyways, this material is brought to the machine factory in the form of huge multi-ton cylinders of purified aluminum. These are then warmed up until they are moldable and passed through a press that turns the cylinders into long sheets just a little thicker and wider than the planned dimensions of the laptop, much like how a pasta press might change a dough into long fettuccine. Now, if these were any other laptops, the aluminum would now be cut into multiple sheets that will be joined together to make the laptop. But in Apple's case, a much more refined method is employed. You see, Apple replaces all those dozens of parts with a single block of metal that is not only far stronger, but is also far more refined. For this purpose, the sheets of metals are cut into pieces just a little larger than the laptop, and then a CNC machine goes to work on it, shaving and carving the solid piece into a complex but rigid structure into which the innards of the computer can be installed super easily. The entire process is done in 13 different steps, which each growing in refinement, so much so that the final refining touches are done using a diamond, so even the parts that do join together later like the bottom plate don't have any major gaps between them. Once this is done, a laser is used to add tiny holes to the material for the speaker grills and the notification lights, after which comes the final part of making the chassis, the finishing. In this process, the marks left by the machining are smoothed over and the classic Apple texture is applied to each surface using a variety of sandblasting and chemical etching techniques. And that is about it for the body. And I am sure that you're wondering what happens to the remaining metal from the original block that the CNC chips away. Well, as it turns out, in an effort to be more environmental friendly, Apple collects all those shavings and melts them to make more laptops making the MacBook the greenest laptop out there in spite of the expensive material cost. The same process is applied to the bottom plate and the lid, which also gets the iconic Apple logo, which is etched and polished directly onto the metal instead of being a separate part like many other people think. Now, once these hardware bits are done and finished, all that is left to do is add the components to the body, starting with the most interacted one of them all, the screen. The displays in the laptop that are found most commonly are LCDs. LCDs are liquid crystal displays, and we can find some small pieces of the liquid crystals inside them that have a particular color. These screens are environmental friendly, and the blacklit display turns on instantly when it's open, since there's no warm-up time required when it comes to your conventional cold cathaloid fluorescent lamp backlight. Now, here's the main difference between the existing MacBook Pro and the new design. While the older version houses the display in a sturdy aluminum frame, the new display design is fitted into a much thinner lid. And on top of that, the interface of the panel is entirely covered with a single glass panel, which is interestingly similar to the front of the iPhone. The perfect finishing touch is a black margin at the bottom of the display screen. The next step is to manually assemble the panel kit, which is the top half of the laptop. The technicians will place a protection film on the 15-inch LCD screen, for this step, and after that, they will plug in the cable design to connect the LCD to the motherboard. Once the two components have been secured, the LCD screen will be carefully inserted into a frame with a web camera and microphone that has been already embedded beforehand. But we're still not done yet. It's time for the technicians to attach the antenna bottom cover to the screen cover and then the motherboard cable that will be positioned inside of it. Next up, the module for the webcam and microphone will be installed before the technicians attach the two hinges connecting this panel to the rest of the laptop. And of course, everyone's favorite thing in the world is installing the Wi-Fi antenna on the antenna bottom cover. Now all there is left to do is conceal all these components in the antenna bottom cover behind the antenna top cover. 
Finally, the panel kit is completed by embedding a thin metal frame around the screen. Motherboard. The life of a motherboard starts as a printed circuit board. The copper wiring forming the electric components of the circuit will be soldered to the board. After that, a machine will place a stencil of the component layout onto the board and solder paste will be applied to the openings of it. And to ensure everything is going smoothly, a quality inspection camera captures images of the solder paste and it sends them to a camera that analyzes the photographs to determine any missing paste, misalignment, or any such errors. Only if the board passes this critical inspection will it be allowed to pass through 15 robotic machines, which will place 150 components to the appropriate locations on the board. All that in just 30 seconds too. Next, the board will be passed through an oven where the solder paste will melt, causing the components to stick firmly to the board. After another camera inspection, functioning tests, and visual inspection of the internal processor to ensure that there's no missing component, the motherboard is moved to the assembly line, where it is then set aside for the time being. Now it's time to assemble everything together. Assembly Alright, now let's put everything together. The technicians will assemble the bottom half of the laptop. For this purpose, the top cover is attached to the panel kit hinges and the touchpad. Then, they will move on to the installing the right and left speakers on the top cover. Once this is done, it is time to bring the motherboard back into play. After another inspection, a computer-guided router will cut out openings to make room for the computer's fans, which are essential in preventing the electronics from overheating. Now, since a gaming laptop generates a lot more heat than the average laptop we use for work, it will require two very powerful fans instead of just one. After ensuring that the fan screws are tightly in their places so they can't shift, the technicians will place the motherboard into the top cover. It must be noted that at this point, contaminants such as dust or oil can impede proper contact, so the memory module's connectors must be cleaned thoroughly with a solvent before drying them with compressed air. Next up is the installation of the memory module, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module, and of course, the solid state disk for storing the data. With all that out the way, the technicians can now focus on connecting a high capacity battery to the motherboard. Gaming laptops need larger batteries because their faster processor and dual fans consume tons of power compared to a regular laptop. This brings us to the last step in the assembly, installing the keyboard. This final component is placed into a rectangular opening in the top cover and the bottom half. And with that, we're done with successfully assembling all the MacBook Pro components. Shipping. The MacBook Pro travels along the 1,000 feet long production line, where workers and robots are placed at the regular intervals in their workstations. Handling their assigned tasks during the production process, it's rewarding but demanding work, since Apple has to enlist the services of multiple suppliers from over the 50 states, and sometimes employs over 15,000 workers. The different components of the laptop come from over 19 states, including Arizona, Colorado, Florida, California, Idaho, and Illinois. Click one of the two videos on your screen right now.